In this article, I will discuss primitive reflexes. So let's get started. Adolf Portman, a Swiss biologist, proposed that human babies are born physiologically premature. The reason for this is that a person needs about 21 months in the womb to lead an independent life from the time of birth. But in reality, the longer the baby lives in the womb, the more difficult it becomes to pass through the birth canal, so human babies are born within a short period of about 10 months. Gorillas, chimpanzees, gibbons, and orangutans are primates that are close to humans, but unlike human babies, they can walk and hug their mothers from birth. However, human babies born within a short period of time, about 10 months, are largely composed of reflex movements called primitive reflexes. Primitive reflexes are reflexes found from fetal life to infancy, with reflex centers in the brain stem and spinal cord of the central nervous system. These are reflexes that help the baby to survive and occur unconsciously in response to stimuli, regardless of the baby's will, because he or she is unable to consciously take food or defend himself or herself against environmental stimuli. Primitive reflexes are caused by an underdeveloped central nervous system, which controls the body's movements. As the central nervous system develops, primitive reflexes naturally disappear and the body shifts to voluntary movements. The central nervous system refers to the brain and spinal cord. If the reflexes are not present as they should be, or if there is a clear difference between the left and right side of the reflexes, there is a possibility that there is a brain disorder such as cerebral palsy. It is also possible that if the primitive reflexes do not disappear for any length of time, the proper development of the central nervous system will not take place and development may be affected. I will now explain the eight main primitive reflexes. The first one is the moral reflex, which I will explain. The moral reflex is a reflex that spreads the hands when the head is lifted up and then the head is suddenly lowered. The same behavior is also observed when loud noises are made. It is said to be a remnant of the primitive movement of monkeys who lived in trees and clung to them to keep from falling. It is also known as the hugging reflex. Disappears around four months, when the head starts to grow. Secondly, I would like to explain the feeding reflex. This is a primitive reflex that causes a series of reactions, such as the infant looks for the nipple, the infant finds the nipple, the infant opens his mouth to suck on the nipple, and the infant sucks on the nipple to drink the breast milk. If we classify the feeding reflex in detail, it consists of the following reflexes in this order, rooting reflex, lip reflex, sucking reflex, and swallowing reflex. Let's start with the rooting reflex. Rooting reflex is the reflexive action of turning one's head and opening one's mouth when one touches the breast or fingers around the lips. Next, let's talk about the lip reflex. The lip reflex is the reflex to nip at the mother's nipple found in the rooting reflex mentioned earlier. The same behavior occurs if you touch it with your finger instead of the nipple. Finally, I will explain the sucking reflex and the swallowing reflex. The sucking reflex is a reflex caused by the lip reflex to suck hard on a nipple or other object that enters the mouth. The sucking reflex is a reflex that is activated by the lip reflex, and the swallowing reflex is a reflex that transports milk from the pharynx to the esophagus. Third, I will explain about the palmar grasp reflex. When the palmar grasp reflex disappears around 4 to 5 months of age, the infant is able to grasp objects at will. The fourth is the plantar grasp reflex. This is a reflex that causes the sole of the foot to flex when an object touches near the ball of the foot. The plantar grasp reflex disappears around 10 months, when the child is able to hold on to the ball of the foot. The palmar grasp reflex and the plantar grasp reflex are thought to be remnants from the time when humans were apes, and are thought to be a way to prevent falling off the mother's body. Fifth, I will explain about walking automatic reflex. Walking automatic reflex is a reflex in which you hold both sides of your baby, put your feet on the floor and lean forward, and then step on your feet alternately left and right as if you were walking. Six, let me explain the Babinski reflex. The Babinski reflex is a reflex in which the thumb dorsiflexes and the other four toes fan out when you rub the outside of the baby's sole with your fingertips, from the heel to the toes. However, if this reflex is still present after the age of two, it is suspected to be a pathological reflex and a pyramidal tract disorder of the central nervous system. The pyramidal tract is the main pathway of the somatomotor nervous system that controls voluntary movements. The seventh one is asymmetrical tonic neck reflex, ATNR. In the asymmetrical tonic neck reflex, when the head is turned to the side, the arms and legs of the side facing the head are stretched and the opposite arms and legs are bent. It is called asymmetrical tonic neck reflex because it shows different movements on the left and right sides of the body, bordering on the center of the body. During birth, this reflex is also thought to help the body turn and turn around to pass through the birth canal more easily. 
The eighth one is gallant reflex. Gallant reflex is also called gallant response. It is a reflex that when you stroke the spine around the waist of an infant, the buttocks of the person you stroke lift up and the spinal column bends. It is thought that this reflex occurs in the birth canal, causing the hips to move and making it easier to move through the birth canal. I will be posting regularly about health fields such as children's growth and development and exercise. Please give us a thumbs up and share it with whoever you think would be beneficial to you.